telling you all season, Philly. They shit on you. Oh. They shit on you. <laughs> Don't you hear me? <laughs> In the car, like, they shit on you. Oh. They shit on you. Here we go. <laughs> they have shit on you. Don't don't you hear me? Jordan Davis, <laughs> Caleb Carter, like, they shit on you. Kill them. Oh my goodness. Did he say they, they cock it on them? Eight style. Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great day. And it is, boy, oh my goodness, it is the middle of the week already. Tomorrow, um, I'm not sure, is there a game tomorrow? Hold on. I know we got games on Friday. I can't remember if the NFL season. Let me look real quick because, you know, I just love listening to this music because here we go. Uh, schedule. Yes, we do have a Thursday night game. We have New Orleans and the Rams. The Rams may be our last hope there of having any shot, of any shot of getting the number one seed. So definitely want to keep our eyes on that one. That one definitely has playoff implications uh, for sure. And then we've got games Saturday, 4.30 and 8 o'clock. So a lot of football action for us to enjoy. The Dallas Cowboys get back on the practice field today. The big question is what will be uh, Zach Martin's status uh, going forward? We need that guy. We need him bad back on the field. So hopefully we get good news as far as his quadricep goes. Um, here's something that's kind of funny to me is um you know here it is we've got the miami dolphins we don't know how Tariq hill is going to be again that's another one of those guys we're going to be looking at to see what is his status as well and i think i need more light here let me turn the light off behind me um I need to get actually some more studio light. There we go. That's better. To get a little bit more studio lighting because the sun's coming through and it's really a luminous place. We don't know Tariq Hill's status for the game. I'm proud, pretty sure he will be playing. In fact, I can almost guarantee that he's going to be playing. And the reality is, is we're in the playoffs. The question is, are we going to be the number two seed or are we going to be the number one seed? The Philadelphia Eagles have been basically imploding over the course of the last three weeks things are getting ugly they are literally thinking that Jalen Hurts is now the new Carson Wentz and it's amazing because Jalen Hurts surprisingly surprisingly as everybody's been talking about him being uh, a um, MVP candidate uh, going forward until they started having uh, the problems that they've had now all of a sudden What's coming to light, which is something we have been talking about all season, that Jalen Hurts is tied with Josh Dobbs, Sam Howe, and Josh Allen with 17 turnovers. Let me say that again. 17 turnovers on the season. And, you know, the, the Eagles could have... We can say that it was definitely game-changing interceptions. You know, they could have taken the short stuff, kicked the field goal. Instead, you know, with a couple of timeouts left, instead they're trying to go for everything. And he throws a game-sealing interception being the second of his night. And we can look on the other end of the spectrum and say, well, Dak Prescott, he has learned to take care of the football. Or maybe it's just that he has his thumb back. And that's the reason why he is not uh, having the turnovers. But it is enjoyable to say the least seeing the eagles implode after all of the crap that i took this off season oh my lord it's kind of quiet around here the eagle fans we don't see them very much anymore but i'm gonna go ahead and enjoy one more time jerry wayne jones what did you think of that seattle ending last night on monday night football it's marvelous <laughs> I watched every bit of it. I was uh, thought I was about to doze, and then when they made those two exciting plays at the end, I couldn't sleep till four this morning because of the impact that it can have on our year and our season. <laughs> but the impact is actually relative. 
at this moment, the Cowboys are in first place in the division. However, should the Eagles win out, the Eagles overwhelmingly likely, I won't go into all the different scenarios, Did but tie for all intents and purposes, if the Eagles win out, they win the NFC East, despite the fact that they're currently listed as a wild card. The one thing standing between the Eagles and the division is Tommy DeVito. Two games against the Giants and one against Arizona. So as we look at this and we welcome the big fella Swagoo into the conversation as well, as, as we dive into the Eagles of it all, mm -hmm. the, the surprise that we have seen these last three weeks and the questions they have raised, what is the number one thought that jumps to mind? It is hard to recreate the magic that you have during your Super Bowl runs. Like that's just, that. now try to take me seriously with this ridiculous yeah, hat on, yeah. but in all seriousness, no, we're gonna it is take hard even to without do that. that. And when you have success, teams lose players, they lose coaches. Yep. And what we were seeing, a lot of people thought, oh, well, the Eagles, they'll, they'll keep on rolling, even though they lost two I believe I said that. That we've seen this point, looking at the offense, the way they've been struggling to score points in the last three games, and also defensively, their struggles in stopping the passing game of other teams. They are they're struggling to recapture what we saw last year, the dominance yep. on offense and defense. And that's a real thing. Absolutely. Listen, we, we, after you go to the Super Bowl, you're going to get cherry-picked. That's just the reality of the NFL, right? They cherry-pick your coaches. They cherry-pick players. Guys will get new mm -hmm. deals on other teams. That's the way it looks. Their biggest loss was Shane Steichen. He's now the head coach in Indianapolis and has done a fantastic job. And if you look at the numbers, they present the best case, right? In 2022, eight, eight explosive plays a game, 22 touchdowns. First in the league. Then you flip it over to this year with Johnson's OC, six plays a game. Uh, so you see 50% reduction yep. in mm -hmm. touchdowns. And what we have talked about in Himbo, when I talk about That's this massive. all the time, explosive plays matter Coaching in the matter. NFL. And when you go from first and all those touchdowns mm -hmm. to not being that, at the end of last year, all the fourth quarters, they were running the ball to secure leads. That meant mm -hmm. the deep, defense could play fast. They could do all those things. Games are tighter. They're having to play tighter ball games, and it has shown up in a big way. Right, and so I think you're making an important point there. We'll get Swagoo up for you in a minute here, having a, a minor technical issue with him. But there's been so much talk about the Eagles' defense. Yeah. And, and look, granted, they acknowledged it was a problem. They made a coordinator sure. change last week. But the reality is in these three games they've lost, they haven't scored 20 points in any of them. I think the, the struggles of their offense have been somewhat overlooked Absolutely. based upon the struggles of the defense. You're 100% you're correct. And I, I'll tell you something else. You can get a shot, go back and watch. Dan Orlowski did a great tape on RPOs in the NFL. And the Colts, the, the Dolphins, and the 49ers are the three teams they've had five games. The Colts have had five games with 200 yards mm. passing and 150 yards rushing in five games. That was the production Philly had last year. Mm. So if you can imagine every game you walked in, you're going to throw for 200, you're going to yeah. run for a buck 50. The control, it's not even about like time of possession, it's just the control and the command of the game. And what, what they have lost in Philly, now not only does it affect your scoring, but it affects how much your defense has to produce. And when they were producing on third down, they are no longer doing that because, again, fatigue, all those things kick in. Yeah. I'm told we do have Swagoo ready where to go, so let's get in here, big fella. We're talking about the Eagles. Obviously, you guys were there on Monday night in Seattle to see it up close and personal. As we figure out, if you're running the Eagles right now, if you're Nick Sirianni, are you more concerned about your offense? or your defense as you go down this final three-game stretch? I'm more concerned about my defense, G. And I, I listen to Kate Mart and, and Jeff, and they are absolutely right about the loss of uh, Shane Steichen. But you think about uh, Philly. They still were in position to win that game. But they've been giving up explosive yeah. play after explosive play week mm -hmm. in and week out. And, and defense is ass You want to limit teams on explosive plays to two per game, right? Which is very difficult in today's NFL. But now it's more about when you give those plays up. And obviously we saw the touchdown to Jackson Smith and Jigma at the end of the game. We saw the plays made by DK Metcalf during that drive. But the thing that concerned me more than anything is the non-aggressive nature in which they play defense. And to Jeff's point with Shane Steichen, a lot of times you were playing for a head. Remember we came on this show all last year and mm -hmm. talked about this vaunted Eagles pass rush and mm -hmm. how they were able to get after the quarterback on a historic pace? Well, you can't do that when you don't have two touchdown leads. You That's can't right. do that when you don't dominate the ball mm -hmm. for a majority of the time. 
and now they're having to play straight up defense with different players. The linebacker mm -hmm. issue has been been a real issue. The middle of the field has been a real issue for this football team as well. But giving up explosive plays at very inopportune times, yes. and 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 seeing them in this kind of we we just want to hold the fort down and see what Jalen and the offense can do. It's That's a right. bad situation for the Philadelphia Eagles because everybody got to go see that monster in San mm. Francisco. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that monster, you better bring your offense you and your defense, and you better <laughs> be playing the style of football that you can be dictating things as opposed yeah. to sitting back and wait. Yeah, one thing Swaggy, that he, you just brought up that I love, the, the, the play that Metcalf made on the third and ten, like that sums up the third Eagles' team, defense for the season, right? Mm -hmm. It's third and ten. You, you, you listen. You can give up a field goal. It really doesn't matter, right? Like, like let them push the ball. But and one of the catches, DK Metcalf, it's a miracle catch, right? It's a mm -hmm. fan. But the third and ten, he drops it in between. You know, over Bradbury. This one right here. This point. Yeah. Boom. Like that, that's a that's a you can't have it. Don't ever let the he can't get over the top of you if you're Bradbury. Like give up whatever's underneath. Kmart, <laughs> would you be shocked if? <laughs> Oh, I hate it. Here's my first question. Kmart, would you be shocked if the... Okay, there we go. Would you be shocked? Nah, we're not going to go into San Francisco. So here's the thing. It goes to the fifth tiebreaker. It's literally that close. The Eagles have no margin for error, as, us, as do we. We need to take care of our own business, first of all, and see what happens with the Eagles, see if they can get up off the mat. I don't know that they can. It has been just absolutely horrendous for the Eagles, and it couldn't happen to a nicer team. I'm Mark Holmes, and well, I got to get to work, and I will see you guys soon.